welcome here as we gather for worship on this Palm Sunday. As we enter into worship this morning, we embark on a journey together. The road we walk in this holy week moves from mountaintops of praise to depths of despair, all of it held in God's wide embrace. We bring our hopes, our burdens, our failures, our fears, our joys, our prayers, our pleading, our praise. We carry the songs of those who've gone before us on this road. We carry the memories that shape us and the dreams that inspire us. We look to Jesus to be our compass and guide, the one who sustains us, the one who saves us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rains in grace, I'll treat myself. When I sing, oh, when I sing, I was much more, but now I am found. reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved of God, grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Here we are. Palm Sunday, 2020. Passion Sunday. Each year on this day, I'm aware of how swiftly things changed in the life of Jesus and of his followers. 
One day he's entering into Jerusalem, welcomed as the long-expected Messiah, worshipped as a savior. And over the course of just a few short days, the crowds are no longer shouting Hosanna, but crucify him. Jesus is no longer lauded, but derided despised, betrayed, abandoned, nailed to a cross to die. One of my favorite Holy Week hymns, My Song is Love Unknown, describes the abrupt change this way. Sometimes we strew his way and his sweet Praises sing, resounding all the day, hosannas to our king. Then crucify is all our breath, and for his death we thirst and cry. This year, as a global community, we're experiencing viscerally how incredibly quickly our lives can change. Things we took for granted just weeks ago are now off limits. We've been forced to find new ways to connect with one another, new ways to provide for our daily needs, new ways to care for our neighbors, new ways to learn, new ways to teach, new ways to do just about everything we did before. And even the things that have remained the same feel different in the context of this changed landscape. Carrie Newcomer's song, The Slender Thread, has been speaking to me in these days. She sings, I never knew it could come to this, that the world I knew would no longer exist. Could we ever have imagined this? Could we have imagined just weeks ago that this would be our life, our world? Could the followers of Jesus entering into Jerusalem with him that day, seeing the palm branches laid at his feet, ever have imagined that the cross was coming? He had told them it was coming. He had tried to prepare them, but they couldn't imagine it until it was happening. I can relate to that in these days. Maybe you can too. The recurring frame of the slender thread sounds to me like a prayer. So look up and bless every guiding star. We've worked so hard and come so far. And home is still wherever you are holding on to the slender thread. There are so many moments lately where I feel like I'm just barely holding on by a slender thread. But home is still wherever God is. And where is God? Right beside me, right beside you. As quickly as things changed after Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, one thing remained the same, Jesus. Jesus was there. Jesus was present to the ones who loved him and the ones who rejected him and denied him. Jesus kept on embodying the grace and love of God. That didn't change, not then, not now. Listen to one of the stanzas of the slender thread and imagine that this is God speaking to you. I've been spooling out a thread from my heart to you. Don't give up on me. Whatever you do, I'm holding on to the slender thread. 
as we hold on by a thread, God is holding on to that thread. God is spooling out that thread from God's heart to yours. When everything changes, God's perfect, present love for you and for this world is unchanging, steady, certain, sure. As we enter into this holy week, may we experience God's love as a present reality in our changed lives. A slender but sturdy thread that holds us close when we feel far apart. God's love for this world is a love that suffers a love that labors, a love that refuses to stand far off, but enters into the sorrow and the despair alongside us. God's love is a love that births us through sorrow and suffering, through even death, to life. Ten years ago, in the early hours of Palm Sunday 2010, I was laboring to give birth to our youngest son. On his birthday this year, in those early morning hours when 10 years before we welcomed him into this beautiful and brutal world, I wrote about God's love delivering me from that long, surprisingly difficult labor. I labored through the night. I was surrounded by support, but there were long stretches when I felt frightened and alone. I didn't know how to do this in the dark when I was so tired, so alarmed by how hard everything was, not just this birth, but everything at that time, every single thing felt hard. Nothing was coming easy. Why should this baby be any different? And then, when I feared I couldn't continue, when I was overwhelmed by the waves coursing through my spent body, when the sun was nearing but wasn't there yet, my son, was born. Logan was born on Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. He was born out of suffering and sorrow. He was born out of fear and weariness. He was born out of labor and rest. He was born out of solitude and support. He was born out of the longest night. I caught him as he came. I held him in the water of that small makeshift pool as God delivered him and me, washed us in waves of grace and baptized us in the promise of abiding through the night love, passionate love. Love that suffers, love that labors, love that births us to life. May the sturdy, slender thread of God's love, a thread that connects God's heart to yours, inspire you to breathe through this unexpected labor empower you to push when needed and rest when necessary, remind you that you do not labor alone, empower you to love and to trust and to have compassion on yourself and others. No matter where this road leads, Jesus will continue to journey beside us, embodying the grace and love of God. He'll walk with us to the cross. He'll go with us even into the depths of hell. 
And when we emerge from the grave that tried its best to claim us, Jesus will be there calling us out to life abundant, unbinding us to love wholeheartedly. You do not labor alone. Amen. to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak, that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and wholeness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that cause us to turn against one another. Give courage to leaders who seek healing and wholeness for all. Bring peace and hope to a world in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, send your saving help to all who suffer. Come quickly to all in need this day. Protect all those who accomplish your healing through their commitment to the common good. All medical professionals, those risking their own lives to care for the sick, those working to ensure safe medical facilities, all those providing services deemed essential in this time of upheaval. Draw near to those who are sick, those who are quarantined, those who fear for their families and for themselves, those who have lost their jobs, those who are overwhelmed by change. Comfort the dying, bring peace to the suffering, tend to all who cry out for relief. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. Comfort us with the promise that death will never have the final word. In life and in death, we belong to you. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The, the peace, peace of Christ, Christ be, be with, with you always, always and, and also with, with you. As we share in the offering this morning, we recognize that this is an opportunity to return to God a portion of what God has entrusted to us. We offer our time. We offer our gifts. For those not experiencing a financial disruption at this time, we offer financial resources for the sake of the common good. Together, we make a difference. Thank you for your gracious support of this ministry and for God's work throughout the world. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy and generous host, prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given us to share, that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and shield you. God shelter you and carry you. God guide your journey both now and forever. Amen. Let's be.
that shall sound, and the light shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Say thanks be to God. <laughs>